Welcome everybody to our TED Talk entitled Simulating the Simulations, Creating Virtual Simulations in the Transition to Internship Course. Thanks so much for your attention. My name is Megan Fix and our, my co-presenters today are Dr. Elizabeth Thackeray and Dr. Safdar Ansari. So when we had to change our course during the pandemic, we had a lot of challenges, but my main point uh, of this part of the talk is really, we had to utilize our assets in order to make a great product. So with that, I invite you all to think back to where you were when you heard that all of your spring coursework had to be shifted to online. Hopefully you were like this, very zen. Oh, I got this. We so can do online learning. And unfortunately for us in transition to internship, we were more like this. Oh my goodness, this is not just online learning, this is emergency remote learning. We felt this way because our course was already scheduled, we had it coming up in a couple of weeks, and we had already signed up over 100 faculty from many departments who were preparing to help us in simulations, for example. And simulations by definition involve a sim center and a mannequin and people in person doing the simulation. So we were thinking, how on earth can we run simulations for all 125 students without a sim center or a mannequin? How are we ever going to maintain our goals and objectives? Which is really what we wanted to do. So to give you an idea of why we were initially so challenged with this, our course, The Transition to Internship, is a two week practicum, if you will, a boot camp to get the students who are about ready to graduate really ready to start their internship in a few weeks. An internship was going to be in person regardless, but our course was going to be online. So we really still wanted to find a way to prepare the students to be their best. This is the time in the spring when all the fourth year class gets back together. And again, it's over 120 students. And the course was already designed to be all in person and mostly hands on in a series of small group sessions and procedure sessions with task trainers. And the point of this talk is really the simulations. We had already scheduled a bunch okay. of simulations for all of the students. So as you can see, moving to online was not just a pivot, but this was like a huge transition in our transition course of what we had already planned. And in order to actually get over our freak out and determine what the course was going to be like, we had to pivot and go focus on our assets and our keys to success, which as you all have realized, you already have. We already had the flexibility to actually do something new and different. We had creativity and we had people who have been doing simulations for years, Dr. Elizabeth Thackeray, who's gonna speak with you in a moment. And most importantly, we had our team. We had the three of us, but we also had our amazing coordinator, Roya, the 100 or so faculty we had already signed up. They were absolutely fantastic. And the students were amazingly gracious with us as we moved to an online platform. And we really, really wanted to make this uh, course the best for them. So finally, in the end, we were able to make lemonade out of lemons, as most of you were too. And in order to do this, we had to really rely on the assets that we had and embrace the challenge because in the end, we made an entirely new curriculum, sorry, an, an entirely new format for the existing goals and objectives that we had already set out. So to give you a little bit more information on how we did this, I give you Dr. Elizabeth Thackeray. Thank you, Megan. So early in the pandemic, John Krasinski created a delightful YouTube show called Some Good News. This little girl was a guest who was so disappointed to miss seeing Hamilton on Broadway when another guest joined the show. She was pretty excited to see Lin-Manuel Miranda, but even more excited when the music from the opening number of Hamilton started and in popped Leslie Odom Jr. rapping the opening number. And she was absolutely thrilled when he was joined by more and more of the original Broadway cast to give this girl an individual performance. We were inspired and we decided that although virtual simulations were not what we had wanted or had planned, we still had the opportunity to create some magic. We visualized a simulation in which faculty showed students pieces of information like a sign out sheet, vital signs, videos, 
and which faculty also played the role of a nurse, patient, or family member to create the interactive experience of, a, of an in-person simulation. This required additional support for both faculty and students and required the faculty to not only facilitate the sims, but also act as their own sim tech, as well as sometimes play a role. We created a sample virtual simulation to demonstrate this back and forth and created a cognitive aid for students. We also asked all participants to log in 15 minutes prior to the start of simulations for a tech check to build in some tech troubleshooting time. We did an extensive Zoom orientation with faculty and we demonstrated this kind of a setup that the faculty would need to create on their own screens in order to allow them to share key information about the patient at just the right time. For example, you can see we've got a patient sign out sheet in one window. We've got a patient video in another window. We've got vital sign screenshots multiple vital sign screenshots so that they could display the right set of vital signs depending on what the students did for the patient. And then we've got some lab values. In other simulations, we had other images like chest x-rays or, or uh, EKGs. And we found that uh, this is much easier to do if you have a second monitor so that you can set up all of this information for the students on a second monitor and then feed it to them at the right time. One of my favorite in-person simulation memories is when the mannequin didn't function right and didn't seize and Megan over the microphone said, seizure, seizure, seizure. So we assured faculty that their improvisations would be welcome and might sometimes be necessary. We encourage faculty to be understanding of potential challenges in the student's ability to participate smoothly. This was inspired by the experience my sister was having at the time. Her husband works from home. She was teaching an online course. And then suddenly their six children also needed to participate in online learning. If the, that difficulty of finding a device, finding quiet space and enough Wi-Fi wasn't enough, two of her sons play the tuba. So at any given point, there might be two tubas practicing in the background. Offering each other grace became our mantra. And so I'll talk about the logistics. We recognize that we had to deliver simulation in a virtual format. We recognize that we needed a software platform to deliver the simulation. And most of you will be familiar with Zoom. Zoom is a virtual online audio video streaming software enabling people to connect and with various accessory tools to enable productive meetings. Zoom has the ability to have breakout rooms. And breakout rooms were something that we needed to enable virtual simulation. We would have a group of 20 to 30 students that we would divide into groups of three or four students each into various breakout rooms. The idea being that a facilitator and faculty member would deliver a virtual simulation case with a group of students in all these individual breakout rooms. What we recognized was that there were various technical failures that we had to accommodate for, not least of which that sometimes breakout rooms just don't work as planned. There were many instances where students did not get the invite or were not able to move to the appropriate breakout room. The most important limitation that we recognized, which I would even call a Zoom fail, is that only the host of a meeting has the ability to move individuals from one breakout room to another. So a med student or a faculty member could not move themselves to the relevant breakout room when needed. This of course highlighted the fact that we needed one faculty member who was the host to be present at all times to coordinate the whole process. And this faculty member's entire job was to make sure that the right med students and facilitators we're in the right breakout room at the right time. We also had several extra faculty members, part of the TTI core faculty circulating amongst individual breakout rooms to make sure that things were going well and to help troubleshoot as needed. Some of these circulating faculty also had to step in when volunteer faculty were not able to deliver virtual SIM in an ideal environment. 
And so the lessons that we learned was to navigate and accommodate different technical challenges. And I'll summarize them as follows. We recognized that we needed to use our assets and be creative in how we implement them. And our biggest assets was our faculty and our expertise and our motivation to deliver these simulations to the students. We tried our best to remember and to bring the magic. And we recognized early on that in the virtual environment, we would need more faculty than we thought initially. We needed a faculty member just to coordinate and then multiple faculty members as backup for the technical challenges that we faced. But most important of all, we recognized that we needed practice, practice, and more practice. Once we had decided a format for virtual simulation, we practiced on each other. Once we had practiced sufficiently, we had two med student volunteers and we had them practice the virtual sim before we felt that we were ready to deliver virtual simulation to the med student group. And I'll end by summarizing some of the feedback that we received from the med students who were quite starved of medical education at the start of the pandemic and uniformly expressed gratitude. And a lot of them were very candid in saying that their expectations from virtual simulation had been very low, but they were extremely, extremely surprised and felt that it was a very beneficial exercise in their road towards internship. And with that summary, we thank you.